Hey everybody, what's up? Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever it is, whatever time it is where you are. Uh, we're making an interesting video today. This is activity 1.2.1, the interview database. This is a complicated program. This has actually been a tough video for me to record. I remember last year, much frustrations going through this. This is my second try recording. And I actually had to use my old video to help me make this one. It was a lot easier this year. And I was kind of terrified watching it at how many times I would be like, um, so I think we're going to click here. Oh, no, no, here. Yes, here. Right. Uh, so <laughs> it's okay. We're improving this year. We're going to tighten it up a little bit. Hopefully make it connection error. No big deal. Uh, hopefully make it a little bit more effective and fun and uh, and shorter. So here we go. Let's dive into it. What would you use this app for? So I don't know about you guys. You probably don't get these calls because you're in high school, but I get these calls uh, where they, you know, call me, hey, how do you feel about Steve Poisner for insurance commissioner? And I respond to these opinion type polls about, you know, the way I feel about him, whether I've heard of him or not, and et cetera, et cetera. And um, so anyways, this is something that could help somebody like that do their job better, right? Somebody who has to interview someone and gather and record that information. It could help them be more effective and efficient with their time by creating a database full of responses. Obviously, that's what you want when you're conducting a study and you're trying to interview people. So you can see uh, we have a pretty complex, uh, at least so far, designer view. We have a bunch of buttons. We have four buttons. We have a couple of labels. We have a lot of places where you, or two places where you could input text. Now you can see that I actually went through and I carefully named all of these. Uh, you could name them whatever you want, but I strongly suggest taking the three minutes or whatever it takes to rename everything. You don't want to be shuffling through button one through button four, trying to figure out what's what is just going to cause you problems down the road. So taking a few minutes to kind of set up your, your designer view is really worth it in this case. Uh, and also making it look good is nice. You know, that's going to be a requirement for us for a level three. Um, using those horizontal arrangements, I have two of them in there right now. You can see these are the three things in my first horizontal arrangement. These are the three buttons in the second one. If you haven't used one yet, they're great. You can just pop stuff in and instead of having like a big long lit line of things all move to the left or whatever, you can arrange them horizontally. Now, one thing I did find interesting that was that was uh, causing me some trouble earlier uh, was I couldn't get the interview question to be centered. I kept changing, oh, pardon me. I kept changing this, this from left to centered, right? But it didn't do anything or it didn't move it far enough. Uh, and I realized what I needed to change was the width of it. I needed to fill that parent up that then it can finally be centered. Uh, it was just centering it within a small section of the screen, right? So it was centering it, but not across the entire screen, just that small section that it was inhabiting. So anyways, okay, there's the uh, designer view. Let's jump into the blocks before I let time run too long. Uh, you can see I've initialized an index variable to one and I have a list of questions. So yes, we are using the list drawer finally. We created a list right here. And since I'm a teacher, I asked some of those questions that I might ask on Google Classroom, like what have you been enjoying about this class? What could I do to serve you better as a teacher? Do you like working in groups or alone, right? And then on the last one, it says questions complete. Thank you. Click next question to restart, right? Uh, and then we have our index. That basically controls which question number we're on. Now, the first thing we're going to do is just set up the screen so that we can see it. Um, <clears throat> so, okay. So there we go. So we're going to go to our screen one drawer and when screen one is initialized, so right there, once the app opens, what are we going to do? The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our interview question and we're going to set it to this. Now we're going to go into our lists drawer and we're going to pull this one index and in list. No, pardon me. This one select item in list. And now we have to provide it with two pieces of information which list are we talking about and which index for that list are we talking about? So obviously I only have one, uh, I only have one list and that list is questions and I only have one index variable. I only have one other variable besides the questions list, 
which is index, right? So that tells us, okay, start with get global questions and start with uh, the index of one, start at that first question right there. Now, this would be a good time to test, make sure everything's working, check out your designer view. I don't wanna let the video roll too long. We will test later just to make sure I didn't forget anything, which I'm prone to do. Um, but anyways, uh, I think I will not test now. You should probably test now. Um, but we will move on here to looking at the next thing, which is uh, what are we going to do to cycle through those questions? So how are we going to move from question one to question two to question three to finally question four and then restarting? Let's take a look at that. Um, that is when we click the next question button, obviously, is when we want that to happen. Let's pull us out a record next question. Uh, and when that is clicked, that's going to be our event handler right there, of course. Uh, and then we're going to go to the control and we're going to get an if then and modify it to put an else in there. Now, the if statement is going to be a less than statement. We're going to check to see if the index is less than the length of the list. So let's grab that index variable right here and plug that into that socket. And we'll change this to a less than. And then we'll go to our lists drawer and we will find the one for length of list. And there it is. <clears throat> length of list. And let's see, of course, we have to tell it which list. And that is the questions list. Okay, so this is testing. All right, is index less than that, right? There's question one, less than the max length. Two is less than the length. Three is less than the length. Once we get to four, that's equal. This condition is going to be no longer true. So we're going to do the else, right? So as long as we're still asking questions, right, before we get to the end, we're going to be in the then portion of the if then else statement. So what do we want to do? Obviously, the first thing we should probably do is add one to the index. So let's go here to uh, set our index to, and then we'll copy this oops, and paste it. And we want to add one to the index. So here's math, pull that over one. And there we go. Okay, so that will kind of take us to the next question. Uh, <clears throat> okay, uh, so what else are we going to do? We're going to do a favor to the person on the phone, right? Or the person who is doing the work for us. And we're going to help them out by erasing the current response, right? So you don't want to have people wasting time and being annoyed at their job as they're wasting, as they're erasing the previous response and moving on. You just want to erase that for them so they can just move on to asking the next question and typing that in. So not the interview question, pardon me, that was the wrong one. The enter response. We want to send that. Uh, we want to set that text. If I can find text right here, we want to set that to being a straight blank string. So we're erasing the previous answer. Okay. And uh, I think that's all we really need to do for um, uh, when the uh, for when the index is less than the length of the list. Now we're going to do that same thing for when it's uh, when it's longer than the length, and we're also going to <clears throat> change their set their name to blank as well. And uh, now since this is the second time recording the video, I know that we also need to oops, we also need to come down here and plug this in right here. So that even though we increment the index, we make sure to set the in the interview question to, of course, our list with the questions. And now with our new recently incremented, right, we added one, now we increment, oh, so we increment, now we show the new question. And I'm forgetting one thing, and what is it? It's something that needs to go in here, and I remember it now. We need to set our index back to one, right? So if index gets to four and they click restart, we wanna take it back to one. So let me just deconstruct this here, pull out the one, and we'll trash that. Okay. Now, let's do a quick test. I know it's a little bit boring watching me test my own thing here, uh, but you know what? That's that's just the way it's gotta be. Uh, okay, so let's see, let's find the apps. Where's the recent apps? Come on now. MIT. 
Okay, here we go. Let's scan the QR code. Now what I'm gonna be testing for with this is just making sure that uh, I can cycle through the questions, right? Obviously we haven't set up anything to save and or remember our apps here. So what have you been enjoying about this class? Everything, obviously. Uh, next question, what could I do to serve you better as a teacher? You the best. Next question, do you like working in groups? Groups, okay. All right, questions complete. Click next question to restart. And there it goes, it does restart. So this is correct. First try, finally, uh, feeling good about that. Okay. Now we're going to move into actually saving the response and then being able to show it later, right? Which is when our uh, tiny DB and retrieve answer, which is what I renamed the list view, is going to come into play here. So let's see. This is a little bit complicated, and you know, I had to cheat a little bit, and I actually took a screenshot of a previous code that I did, and I'm going to refer to that a little bit. So don't judge me too harshly here. Uh, okay. So now one thing we want to make sure is that we do this before we set the text to blank. Otherwise, it's just going to be a blank string there. Uh, so let's see. <clears throat> Pardon me. I'm oh, talking too much here. Uh, so let's go to TinyDB and let's see what's up in here. So let's see. Uh, pretty clearly, we want to use the store value tag uh, or we want to store a value and now we're going to store it with a tag and then we're going to tell it what value to store and we're going to need two concatenations uh so these are right here when you can join string values together so let's pull those out uh and our tag is going to be two things it's going to be our interviewer's name and the index number. So let's grab our index and uh, paste that. And I'll put that in second. And let's put our name in of our interview subject. Uh, so let's see, enter name right there. And then we'll grab that text. So uh, enter name.txt. So this will be stored with the tag of that. So we can use it to find that later. And then the value to store. Uh, we will grab <clears throat> this right here. So let's see, what will we grab? What do we want to store? And that's what I got to look at again. Ah, yes, okay. So we're going to add a couple more strings here. We're going to join four things. And there they are, all four of them. Uh, now the first one is going to be the date. Uh, so we haven't talked about the date yet. Put that one on hold uh, because we will at the end of the video. So we're just going to put a blank. Actually, I'll just put a placeholder in there. For date. Um, now, next, what we're going to do is we're going to store the name, the index, and their response. So, of course, let's just grab this one. And I think we can actually just grab this as well. Okay, and let's change this to no, not text, pardon me, to enter response. So we're going to, so you. it's kind of confusing, like why do we have to store their name twice? We're not actually storing the name twice. This is the stuff we're storing right here. And this is the tag for that storage so we can grab it later, right? So we can recognize it and find it and pull it out. Uh, okay, so there you go. Um, <clears throat> this should all be good. I think that's fine there. Uh, let's talk about the date picker. And then I think I'm going to end the video there, give you a couple hints, and we'll end the video. Uh, to set up the coding to record or to show the thing, you just have to go to 41 right here. And it says duplicate these blocks to retrieve information from a database in the interest of time. I think you guys are going to be fine uh, to figure out how to copy this. If you need help, of course, I can help you in class. Um, but hopefully that'll, that will work out okay. Before we go, let's talk about the date picker. So now, first of all, I think I might have actually forgotten to add the date picker into my uh, user interface here. So let's see. Layout, no, that's not where we want it. User interface, date picker. Let's pull that in. And I believe, oh, you know what? I did it wrong. I made this. A, uh, I made this a button when it's actually a date picker. So let's just grab that. And I think that's fine. And then I have right here, it says date label and I named it date test label. 
This is just to test it out, and then I'm going to later delete it. Uh, okay, so let's go over here to our blocks. So we have our uh, date test label, and we have our date picker. Okay, so uh, we're going to use this date label, or when date picker one, uh, after date set, what do we want to do? So <clears throat> we're going to come here, and we're going to grab a big concatenation. So let's grab that, and then we're going to set the text of our date test label uh, right here, date test label uh, dot text to, and we're going to do a concatenation and we're just going to join up a bunch of strings. And you really, you need a lot here uh, to get this to work right. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to let you guys, I'm going to put the problem solving on you uh, to do this, but I'm going to give you some, I'm going to give you some hints here date picker one. Okay. Now the question is, how do we get that month here? So what we want to do is we want to join our month. Uh, okay. So let's look here at the date picker. And we have these components right here, date picker year. So obviously, that's probably going to go towards the end. Um, <clears throat> Let's copy this. There we go. Okay. And uh, let's see. Here in the US, we start with the month, and then we do the day, and then finally we do the year. And we also typically separate those with like slashes or dashes, right? Something to make it a little bit easier to read. And we typically don't use the 2000, right? The 20 or the 19 for 19. We just drop those off. So if you want to get rid of them, you can use this text right here. And let's get rid of them in this case. Let's say uh, segment text right here, start and length. And I'll let, I'll let you guys mess with this just a little bit, the start and length. It's kind of fun. It's a pretty interesting uh, problem to do that. So after your date is all set, you're just going to take it and you're going to pull it up here. And let's delete that. You're just going to pull it up here and you're going to delete date right there and pop that in there. And then everything should be good to go. It is shorter than last time. Still long video, still a tough program, but I believe in you. Thank you for watching. Good luck.